Royal winds. Yeah. Oh, Ahoy there, cruises. cruises. We're going to put two of the biggest cruise lines in the world against each other. Royal Caribbean versus Norwegian Cruise Line. But first, don't forget to subscribe. Okay then, so let's break this down to make it really easy. We're gonna break it into different categories such as best ship, best cabin, best entertainment, and best value for money. Then we're gonna give them a point each, so you can either give Norwegian a point or Royal Caribbean a point. To make this fairer, because both airlines have new ships and old ships, we're just gonna compare this on the new ships. So for Royal Caribbean, that's the Oasis class and Quantum class, and for Norwegian, that's the Escape class. So the Norwegian Escape, Encore, Bliss, Joy, Getaway and breakaway. So let's start with who has the best ship. Well, Norwegian altogether has 16 ships, including the older ships, and Royal Caribbean comes in at a much bigger fleet of 25 ships. What we also find as well is that we think Royal Caribbean ships always tend to look inwards. So things such as the uh, the boardwalk area and the central park area are through the middle of ships with actual cabins looking down into it. Whereas Norwegian Cruise Line tends to look outwards with the wonderful waterfront area, which is the wraparound promenade deck with the bars and restaurants on it. But then again, the Royal Promenade in the centre of the ships is also really fantastic as well with loads of shops and dining. So that's something that Norwegian definitely doesn't have. And you can't beat the fact that the Central Park and the boardwalk areas are fantastic spaces, really well themed with the um, the actual live plants and the live, uh, I was going to say animals, but there is no animals. Live animals? <laughs> yeah, and I guess Royal really does pip it with the innovation of what's on their ships as well. See, the water parks on NCL for me though, are slightly more terrifying with that drop water slide. Yeah, I guess. And so you are a little bit, yeah. probably a little bit scarier. So it's really subjective. It's really hard, isn't it, to pick who's who's the best out of this. So in terms of what's on there for kids, well, they're both very similar for kids clubs, but we think maybe the new Royal Caribbean ships maybe pip Norwegian Cruise Line for the kids facilities available. Right, should we vote then? Do, 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 do. I'm not looking. I'm not looking. Ready? Three, three, two, one. Oh, we both voted for Royal. Both for Royal. Yeah, they're probably a little bit more innovative. Ro uh, Norwegian Cruise Line, however, are really catching up fast with new things like the motor cart racing track and things like that. So yeah, Royal for the win, I think, for the ships. Right, next category is who has the best cabin? Ooh. Well, let's talk about Norwegian Cruise Line first of all. So we think these are much better for solo travelers because yeah. they have a lot of solo cabins on their ships, really big areas with a whole solo lounge as well, yeah. which is fantastic. I mean, that solo lounge is possibly, I think one of the only ones you'd get at sea that offer a solo lounge. It's fantastic, And it isn't is it? great, we've had a look in it. It's a nice big space and it's great to meet other solo cruisers uh, like yourself as well. There's loads of different categories as well. They don't have the virtual balconies, which Royal Caribbean do have on most of their new ships so that's definitely a plus for Royal. When it comes to suites Royal Caribbean does have some fantastic suites probably the most impressive with the kids suite suite and the dual duplex suites which are dual level which look fantastic but what Norwegian do extra special is the haven area which Royal Caribbean don't so this is a separate area for sweet guests with their own pool outdoor areas restaurants and everything and lounges inside mm -hmm. it's like a ship within a ship but Royal don't do this but then Royal still do have perks for their sweet guests such as the uh, VIP seating at the shores and the uh, restaurant that's just for sweet guests as well plus the innovative royal genie your personal butler that is supposed to anticipate your every needs and you also get this on norwegian as well with the concierge service mm -hmm. but when it comes to families as well there's a massive range of cabins on both ships but i do think norwegian just pips it they have some amazing family cabins which sleep up to like five six people and they have adjoining room cabins which are fantastic as well but something norwegian has as well is the spa suites that um are a standard cabin but with access to the thermal suite on board and other spa like things like that that's really good so that's an extra added option for you for cabins. Should we have a vote? Let's have a vote. Two, Ooh. one. <gasps> Norwegian. Norwegian. Yeah, it has to be Norwegian for their for them catering for solo travellers and the amazing sweet area with the haven. Round three. So which ships have the best entertainment on board? Norwegian Cruise Line has Broadway shows as well, as does Royal Caribbean Cruise Line. Yeah, so on Norwegian you're going to find shows such as Rock of Ages, Kinky Boots, Jersey Boys and Million Dollar Quartet. And on Royal Caribbean, you'll find the Broadway shows, Mamma Mia, Cats, We Will Rock You, and Grease, and more. So I think there, they're probably just about yeah. the same, aren't they? It's really tough to, to figure out which one's best. But then Norwegian Cruise Line has extra shows, such as the Cirque show, 
but these are an extra cost as well, which is a little bit, you know, you've, you've paid for your cruise and then it's an extra yeah. cost on top of that. And Wine Time the Musical or something as yeah. well, isn't it? I forgot what it's Happy called. Happy Hour the Musical. Happy Hour the Musical, Wine Time the Musical. Yeah, they both have a really good selection of things like game shows and trivia during the day and evening as well. And what Norwegian do really well is having sort of comedy clubs on board, which are great. Mm. So they have some really good comedy clubs with visiting comedians and visiting acts. Same with Royal Caribbean as well. But I think Norwegian maybe goes a l aims a little bit of an older audience with their deck parties. So like the white party and oh, stuff. Oh, the, the deck parties are so fantastic. There's so much yeah. fun out there. They're really elaborate. So you've got glow parties, white parties and themed parties as well. Really good stuff. So across the ships as well, you'll find loads of music with like live bands in the pubs and the bars and solo guitarists, all sorts going on. Yeah, and what Royal do really well as well is that they have two theatres on their newest ship, so on the Quantum class and the Oasis class. On the Oasis class, you have the amazing big theatre at the front showing those Broadway shows, and at the back you actually have the Aqua Theatre where they put on spectacular aqua shows with amazing aerialists and things jumping in the pool. And obviously on the Quantum class ships you have the same theatre, but then you have the 270 at the back with the big robot moving arms and things and those spectacular shows in there. So, shall we Time then? to vote. Let's pick three, two, one. Oh, I can see we picked the same one. Yeah, same one? Royal Caribbean. So, it's so it's so close, guys. Yeah. I think it just has to be Royal Caribbean. Because I think the Broadway theatres are very similar in the main theatres. I think they're sort of on a level. But then for me, Royal just pips it by having that extra venue. Yeah. So having the uh, 270, 360, 180, what's it called? The 270 theatre. The 270 theatre. And the aqua theatre. Or the aqua theatre, depending on which ship you want, which I think sort of like just gives it that little edge of uh, Norwegian Cruise Line. Should we have a go for the next round, round number four? Round Round number four, let's take a look at who has the best activities on board. So let's look at some of the features on Norwegian cruise line ships so far. Well, on the newest ships, you have those amazing goat carts, which are just fantastic, as well as uh, water slides, really thrilling water slides, climbing walls, child specific pools, laser tag, outdoor screens, uh, ropes courses, mini golfs, and fantastic themed parties. And on Royal Caribbean, you have the Dodgems, you've got the North Star, you've got the iFly, the oh. Flow Rider, they've also got climbing walls and ice, an ice rink on the ship as well, which yeah. is also a laser tag arena. Yeah, when it comes to innovation, we reckon that Royal Caribbean are just pipping them out at the post, I think. Oh, let's go three, two, one. Oh, we've got the same Royal Caribbean. Yeah, I think they just pipped them to the post. I mean, the iFly by Ripcord and the amazing Flow Rider, as well as like the North Star and the Zipline and the Abyss Slide. Yeah. Oh, I think they just pipped them, don't they? But Norwegian are catching up. So, should we do the next round, round number five? And it's a big one, guys. It's who has the best dining. Do you want to talk about Norwegian? So, they have a freestyle dining concept which means that you can dine wherever you want with total flexibility with no set time dining. You do need reservations, however, for the speciality restaurants and there are plenty of speciality restaurants to choose from with tons of options from Italian to Asian to seafood and everything in between. We do think though they are better for up for 24 hour around the clock dining with the included pub on board that serves some great food options. Yeah, whilst on Royal you do have some places which are open most of the day, it's usually is sort of restricted just to pizza or sandwiches. Yeah. But with the pub you can order main dishes and things which is great, especially if you've been partying all night yeah. and want like a midnight snack. So with Royal Caribbean they have fixed and flexible time dining, but with the flexible time dining we found that some ships still make you, make you make reservations for a certain time which kind of goes against the whole flexible thing. There yeah. is a larger choice of speciality on the bigger and newer ships and reservations are always required for speciality dining just as Norwegian but what we, what we really like about Norwegian is the al fresco options on the waterfront so you're able to eat outside you don't tend to be able to do this with the main speciality restaurants on royal ships do you so that's no. definitely a pip in Norwegian's cap. Should we vote? Three, two, one. Bing! Norwegian. Norwegian! Yeah, I think Norwegian. Both of them are 
about the same quality through all of their yeah. restaurants and buffets but we think with the outside dining that's a definite definite plus for us isn't it on the beautiful waterfront at sunset mm. so who has the best value for money now this is a really important one for us let's talk about norwegian first of all well lots of the restaurants and some of the activities are an extra charge just on both cruises but what norwegian do which is fantastic is continuously run their free at sea program now this is where you can pick two or thing two or three items completely for free usually these include the drinks package which is always worth the most money a dining package wi-fi or on board credit where they give you some money you can spend on board so while royal caribbean don't run the drinks promotion all the time they do occasionally offer 30 percent of pre cruise purchases before you sail which you can use against the cost of a drinks package and especially here in europe we've been looking at some of the prices of cruises and because of this royal caribbean do usually come in a little bit cheaper mm -hmm. because i think uh, norwegian obviously factor in the free at sea charge at the beginning so royal caribbean don't have as many paid extras on some of their ships as norwegian do as all the entertainment or most of the entertainment i should say is included in the price of your cruise and with royal you won't find as many discounts as you do with Norwegian um, when booking or extra offers like the ones that we mentioned earlier. Oh, it's a really tough one, this isn't it? Should we vote? Yeah. Three, two, one. Norwegian. Yeah, I, yeah, I think it dep depends on the where in the world you are, but I think Norwegian yeah. with their free at sea package is so fantastic. I don't think you can go wrong, do you? I know, and especially if you are a drinker and you do a, enjoy and use the drinks package, it is going to be the best value for money. But if you are maybe travelling with a family who's going to be doing all the onboard activities, it could add up, so maybe Royal Royal's be better, better for you. Three, oh, so it's a tie overall. A tie. Which I think is a really, f I think yeah. that's quite fair because both of the cruise lines have massive downsides and have massive upsides. Yeah. I think if you just merge them both into one cruise ship, taking the best bits from Norwegian and the best bits from Royal Caribbean, could you imagine it'd be fantastic? Oh, yeah. So an Oasis class ship with the waterfront and that amazing dining. Oh, and with, the, with the free at sea as well. Oh. And building cruise ships. I'm going to build a cruise ship. Ben yeah. and David cruise ships. Can you imagine? Cruising the world. So guys, that's it for this episode. Please give us a subscribe and hit that bell button so you're notified when we upload a brand new video. And if you'd like to support us further, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Big thank you to our cruise captains, Amy and Tris. Yep, so that's it till next time. Happy, Happy cruising. cruising. Dum, 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 dum. Smackdown. It's, it is like bats, isn't it? Royal versus Norwegian. Bitch slap. <laughs>